This lesson is on the earliest signs and symptoms of diverticulitis, and more specifically, this will be on some of the earliest findings that we can see occurring in an acute diverticulitis flare before some of the more severe presentations or signs and symptoms occur. Before we talk about those earliest signs and symptoms, let's discuss what diverticulitis is and some risk factors for getting it. So diverticulitis is inflammation of diverticula, so itis refers to inflammation, and diverticule, that prefix refers to diverticula. So what are diverticula? Diverticula are outpouchings of the wall of the large intestine. So here is the small intestine, and here is the large intestine, and it's going to be these bulges that pop out of the sides of the large intestine because of weakening bowel wall, which can occur due to certain risk factors that generally occur over many years. And what we generally see is that these diverticula can be most commonly found in a particular part of the colon known as the sigmoid colon. So you can remember the sigmoid colon as this sort of S-shaped part of the colon near the end of the colon and near the rectum. Now having diverticula doesn't mean you have diverticulitis, but having the presence of diverticula is a condition that we call diverticulosis. But when we have inflammation of these diverticula, then you get the condition diverticulitis. So what are some of the risk factors for getting diverticula and also diverticulitis? So some of the risk factors include older age. This is a very important risk factor, especially over the age of 60. As we get older, our large intestinal wall becomes weaker over time due to activity over decades. So we get more chances where there's a weakened part of the wall and a bulge that forms. Chronic constipation is also another important risk factor. So if you've had long-term low fiber diets or long-term low water intake, and this ends up leading to chronic constipation for you, you can imagine that your bowel's really working hard when you're constipated. So it's got a lot of pressure in the system. So the pressure inside the large intestine ends up weakening the bowel wall as well, leading to these bulges. Smoking is also another risk factor, especially for increasing your risk for diverticulitis, and also having a higher BMI can also be another risk factor. And some other ones include uh, higher use of ibuprofen or non anti-inflammatory drugs. So that's another risk factor for getting diverticulitis. So what are some of the earliest signs and symptoms of an acute diverticulitis flare? One of the earliest symptoms that can occur is bowel habit changes. So you're going to start to feel a little bit off you may have a bit of a change in the consistency or frequency of defecation, and this can be an important early finding in an acute diverticulitis flare. So if we were to look at the bristle stool chart, type 4 stool is going to be normal stool, and constipation is going to be type 1, 2, and 3 stool, and diarrhea is going to be type 5, 6, and 7. Now what can happen is that generally, if you've had normal bowel habits, say if you have a particular stool shape or consistency that occurs at a regular time interval, you're going to find that in an acute diverticulitis flare, you're going to get some changes in when you use the washroom and also the consistency of your stool. Now, oftentimes we're going to see constipation occurring first, and we can also get an alternation of diarrhea as well. So this can be a bit tricky in the sense that patients who have diverticulosis or have had a past episode of diverticulitis may have constipation more regularly than other individuals. But what we will see at the beginning of a new acute diverticulitis flare is that we will start to have a bit more constipation or there will be reduced consistency or reduced frequency of defecation. And then what can also again happen is that there may be constipation for a couple of days and then there may be some diarrhea that occurs or we may see more diarrhea occurring than constipation. So there may be this fluctuation or change in your bowel habits and this can be one of the first signs of an acute diverticulitis flare. So again it's a change to your normal frequency and or consistency of stool. So again it's a change from your particular normal. And this will be especially important in those who have had a past episode of diverticulitis so they can keep an eye out for any change in bowel habit frequency or consistency of stool. And there can be a lot of patients who have diverticulosis or who have had past episodes of diverticulitis and they can start to have some symptoms of a diverticulitis flare up. And if they treat it promptly, it may not spread into a more systemic, complicated disease. And we would simply refer to their symptomatology as symptomatic, uncomplicated diverticular disease. So why does bowel habit changes occur? So you can imagine that if you've got a diverticula, again, more commonly in the sigmoid colon, and it becomes inflamed and it starts to become a bit enlarged, it gets a bit swollen. You can imagine that 
you're going to get some irritation and some inflammation in that area of the large intestine. And that's going to change the amount of gastric motility or the large bowel movement. And it's also going to change how much water is absorbed from your stool. So the large intestine is very important in absorbing water. So if you have some of these factors or effects going on, you can get issues or changes in your stool consistency or in the frequency of bowel movements. So these effects can all lead to changes to bowel habit patterns. Now, another important early finding in an acute diverticulitis flare-up is abdominal pain. So abdominal pain is often going to start off as mild and a bit of crampy pain. And even if you don't feel the pain right away, if you were to touch a certain part of your abdomen, which we'll discuss here in a moment, it can be tender to touch. And if we were to leave that diverticulitis and not treat it, and it becomes worse and the inflammation becomes worse, the pain will also become worse. Now, whereabouts do we get this particular pain most often occurring? It's most often going to occur in the left lower quadrant. So if we were to look at the abdomen of a patient, we use the belly button as a midpoint and we dissect it into four quadrants. So this is the right side of the patient when we're looking right on the patient. This is the left side of the patient. And in the left lower quadrant is where we're going to get most often pain occurring. And in Asians, interestingly, this is most likely going to occur in the right lower quadrant. Now, why do we get pain in this particular area most often? Because we are more likely to see diverticula occurring in the left lower quadrant. That's because that's where the sigmoid colon is located. So again, even if you don't feel that mild crampy pain at the beginning, you might start off with a bit of a tender area right in that left lower quadrant. That can be a very early finding in an acute diverticulitis flare-up. So that can be one of the first things that can occur when you start to have it, that flare. And again, it's because of the fact that there's a diverticula that has be started to become more inflamed and swollen and we start to get inflammation and pain. And the pain is also going to be associated with bowel habit changes. So oftentimes when you're having those bowel habit changes we discussed before, you're also gonna have some of this pain or the tender touch in the left lower quadrant especially. Another important early finding in a diverticulitis flare-up is fever. So it's often gonna be a mild fever, which we would term as low grade. So it's gonna be less than 30.3 Celsius or 101 Fahrenheit. This is due to inflammation of the diverticula. So inflammation can lead to a fever. And the reason is because there can be an immune response. So you've got that inflamed diverticula, there can be bacteria that grow. There's an immune response to that inflamed diverticula. And then that immune response leads to what we call cytokines. So there's a release of cytokines. These are immune system chemicals. So some of them include TNF-alpha or tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin or IL-1, and interleukin-6. And what these do is that they end up traveling through our bloodstream and affecting a part of our brain called the hypothalamus. That's a structure deep inside the brain, and that helps change our body temperature. So that will change our temperature set point. That'll increase the set point and make us feel that we need to go to a higher temperature. So it's an immune response to a potential immunological inflammatory threat. So that is one of the potential early findings in patients who have a new onset diverticulitis. But in some other patients, interestingly, they can experience urinary changes. So in some patients, they can experience changes in urination patterns when they start to have a new onset of an acute diverticulitis flare. And this can be a potential early symptom of a new flare. Some of the urinary changes include urinary urgency, so feeling like you need to urgently use the washroom, you need to urgently urinate, increased urinary frequency, so you need to urinate more frequently, even though it's small volumes, and dysuria, or burning or painful urination. You may be wondering why this happens. It seems to look like a UTI or a urinary tract infection. But in fact, in individuals who have diverticulitis, they can have an enlarged inflamed diverticulum that ends up pressing on the bladder. So you can imagine here's the bladder here. And because you've got this structure in behind the sigmoid colon that has a diverticula, depending on the location of where that diverticula is, and also depending on how large it is, when it becomes inflamed, it can become a bit swollen and start to press on the bladder. This can lead to some of these changes in urination. So this can be important and potentially early finding in an acute diverticulitis flare. Now, another potential early symptom of diverticulitis is nausea. 
So nausea can occur early on in a diverticulitis flare. It may actually be a common early symptom of diverticulitis. And this is also due to inflammation and swelling of diverticula in the large intestine. And the reason that this nausea can occur is due to some of those factors we talked about before. When we've got that inflamed diverticula, there can be inflammation in the large intestine, and that can lead to reduced gastric motility. So the large intestine doesn't push its products forward as well as it should. There's going to be a backing up of gastrointestinal content. This can end up leading to patients feeling a bit nauseous. And there also can be a stimulation of sensory nerves from that inflammation that can end up inducing sensation of nausea as well. Now, along with this, due to a similar effect of reduced gastric motility, we can start to get bloating occurring in some patients. So because of the fact that there's a reduced gas motility, there's changes in how gas is processed through the large intestine, gas can build up and patients can start to feel a bit bloated. And there can also be a sensation of abdominal fullness. So all these can be early findings in an acute diverticulitis flare up that can be important to assess for. Please check out my full lesson on diverticulitis to learn about some of the more severe complications of diverticulitis and how it's diagnosed and treated, please also consider joining as a member for members only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.